go. Cool. And here we go. Good evening, everyone. Ooh. Ominous. Also awesome. desk is gross. I gotta clean this shit off. Anyway, um, good evening everyone. Welcome to Mortality Monday, where I have decided that I am done with Little Big Adventure. Uh, oh, well, hang on. Let me ch test my chat first before I, before I get into this. Testing chat. Yes, good. That works. Okay, good. All right. Always gotta test chat before I start. Anyway, yes, so I, uh, I've made the executive's decision that my patience with Little Big Adventure has run out, and I'm done with it, and I don't care about it anymore. I was no longer having fun. So instead, we're going to play something different. Something new to me. Uh, Dragon Sphere, which is a point-and-click adventure game. Ah, uh, it'll be nice. It'll be nice to play a point-and-click adventure game again. <laughs> As opposed to the to whatever the hell Little Big Adventure is. Uh, yeah, so I know very little about this game. Um, I have the manual. I, well, I don't have it pulled up, but I have it. It's on, it's, it's on my computer. If I need it, I, I've got it. Um, and I, re I did read it before I started, um, like last week. But anyway, yeah, manual. Read the manual, kids. Hello, 32-bit kid. Speaking of kids, <laughs> I don't know. Um, so, yeah, let's give it a try. Ooh, taking advantage of extra memory. Hopefully this game will actually work. D <laughs> Dagon Sphere, yes. <laughs> well, they say that, uh, I mean, doesn't Cthulhu kind of look like a dragon? It's got like a dragon body. An octopus face. Oh. <laughs> yeah, probably not. <laughs> there are rideable lizard things. I'm I'm immediately in love. <laughs> this game has sauruses, therefore I love it. <laughs> A sorcerer arrives, as you predicted. As I promised, my king, my spells are ready. Then begin. If we cannot destroy Sanwei, we can at least render him harmless. Do a heckin' magic. <laughs> the wizard is brave, my son. Watch carefully. Yeah, for sure. I'm getting like Lands of Lore slash um, Conquest of the Longbow vibes from this. Both of which are games I fucking love, so. <laughs> you know. Yep, off to a good start. Dude in purple wizard robes, riding a Saurus thing. About to go kick ass and take names. Whoa. Cool. Oh no! Watch out, wizard dude! You're gonna get a waterfall dumped on you.
What? <laughs> Dragon 8 Ball, yes. <laughs> I love it. Okay, this rules. <laughs> yeah, Sound Blaster music. That was the sound card I had when I was growing up. Sound Blaster. Complete with the, like, goofy parrot game and Dr. Sabato. Who I like to break. <laughs> yeah, this rules. I see you've learned much, old wizard, but your foolish spell cannot withstand the forces that bring my tower. Dot dot dot. <laughs> to your world each cycle. In a score of years, I will be free, and I shall wreak terrible vengeance upon you. What is this, Castlevania? He lies. I wouldn't be so sure about that. Twenty years later... <laughs> we did eventually get a CD-ROM player. My son, I'm sorry to leave you. Blech. Fear not, father. You have taught me to be strong. I can face the sorcerer alone. So it must have been like a kid at the time that that happened. Or, yeah, pretty young. Father? Father? The king is dead. Long live the king. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Maybe he died of like a sickness or a wound or something. Look at this. Long live the king! <laughs> this is so lavish. I love it. Eh! <laughs> Fuck being king! <laughs> Ah, uh, the bed where my father died. <laughs> Not creepy at all. <laughs> that probably isn't. Let's go in the bed. Uh, oh, okay. Heavy is the head that wears the crown. Oh, they changed the sheets, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, that... De <laughs> That definitely got me jazzed to play this game. I'm gonna play on challenging mode. Because the manual says that, like, uh, I think the puzzles are harder. So, yep, we're doing challenging. The dragon spear stirs, my lord, and more powerfully than before. Let me sleep. We'll destroy the sorcerer another day. <laughs> Five more minutes. <laughs> Let me sleep. We'll destroy the sorcerer another day. Husband, you gave orders that you were to be awakened as soon as the dragon spear showed signs of cracking. Time is short. You said so yourself. Fine. <laughs> Very well. Await me in the council chamber. Can't refuse the call, I guess. As you wish, my lord. Your mother and I await your pleasure. Okay. Ooh. This sumptuous array consisting of bolster and pillow is the kind of extra extravagance that made you jealous when you were a child and had to sleep on whatever rude materials were available. Ha <laughs> 
<laughs> as a dick to his wife. <laughs> Hold on a second. Uh, I forgot to pop out my chat, so let me actually get it out so I can see it better. There we go. That's better. The large ornate bed you're lying on is fit for a king, and that's what you are now. Like it or not, with the death of your father, you've assumed the reins of power, wrong spelling of reins, in the kingdom. The thought makes you want to curl up and go back to sleep. There's a lot of stuff to look at. Although your court wizard, Ner Tom, claims that light can be easily generated by magical means, your father always insisted on the traditional wall sconces that provide light all over the castle, and you intend to continue that custom. The various decorations about the room are the clan symbols of the families whose sons have married princesses and gone on to rule the kingdom. By Kalahak law, they must take the Kalahak clan name. The decorations are to remember the clan they once came from. Neat! World building! The plaques on the walls are the clan symbols of those families who have joined the royal line by, by wedding the crown prince. Now that you are king, it's time to put the Fianula, I'm pro probably butchering that name, clan symbol, that of your wife, upon these walls. The great plaster bust of Cal, god of the clans, glowers down at you from above. He was the mighty lord of earth and sky who battled the god of the sea, Jesh, to preserve the land you call Kalahak. The ceremonial swords on the wall are traditional clan dueling weapons. This pair was supposedly carried by Gorm himself. One of them was supposedly used to cut the head from Roar, the leader of the Tiger Men invaders in the Southlands. Myth and, le myth and legend, you're sure. I hope we get to meet the Tiger Men! <laughs> the window overlooks the sweeping fields that make up the farmland of Grand Kalahawk. Today is a beautiful day. Birds roam, roam about, singing their joy, and the clouds roll gently across the sky. One good thing, perhaps the only good thing about your quest, at least I get to spend a lot of time outdoors. <laughs> yeah, don't sit inside staring at a screen all day. <laughs> the royal crest of Clan Kalahawk hangs proudly in the king's bedchamber as a symbol of authority and power. You remember thinking in the past that it was soul-stirring, but now it just looks too- it, it just looks gaudy. The dressing screen is a depiction of a royal hunt on the outside and a small hook in back for hanging clothes. Your traveling gear is hanging there, ready for your journey. I like how I'm doing all this while I'm still just lying in bed. Just, nope. <laughs> yep. I'm <laughs> just like... <laughs> looking around the room. <laughs> You swore a solemn vow last night not to touch the crown or robe of office again until the threat of the sorcerer was removed. The chest contains various personal belongings of your father, but nothing you need to have right now. The chest will remain closed until you return. The rugs here, though plain in appearance, are imported from far Softus Ecliptus, the land of the desert nomads. They are handmade, woven from fine furs of animals few Kalahawks have ever seen, and are amazingly expensive. The floor is made of hand-painted hardwood, laid over the strong earth upon which Castle Kalahak was built. It's showing some scuffs and signs of age. If you make it back alive, it might be time for some repairs. There's so much to look at! The walls and the floor have, have, uh, have hot spots. The walls of Castle Kalahak are sturdy and strong, slabs of granite and marble from the great quarries to the south of the capital city, Grand Kalahak. Their strength seems hollow now in the face of the threat from the sorcerer. The robe and crown, your royal seals of office, are to remain where they are until you have completed your quest. The crown is simple and unadorned. The robe a shade of powder blue you wouldn't wish on your worst enemy. <laughs> it was nice and green. I thought that was a nice color. The royal seal of Kalahak is everywhere about the room. It gives you a sense of pride to look at it, but also a sense of distance. Perhaps you will feel more worthy once the threat of the sorcerer is no longer hanging over your head. The great fireplace provides most of the heat for the room, especially in the colder months. The fire must have been stoked recently, probably while you slept, for it is now burning merrily. The heavy brass fireplace screen traps heat and then radiates it slowly into the room. It was a clever innovation of Nur Tom's. Its flickering shadow hypnotizes you for a moment. I guess I'll get up. Ah, before you do anything at all in the morning, you always need a good wash. Now you feel better. You briefly consider shaving, but decide not to. You might as well get used to roughing it. Unfortunately, your valet is not yet used to his duties and forgot to leave a towel. You'll just have to air dry. <laughs> Shh, 
shake yourself like a dog. Oh, look at this snazzy dude. Your teacher of etiquette always said, do nothing in the clothes in which you sleep except sleep. Despite the few exceptions you've discovered as you grew, as you grew older, you found it to be pretty sound advice. Now, dressed in your traveling clothes, you feel ready for any you feel ready for anything. What was it you meant to do next? Few exceptions you've discovered as you grow older. I feel like that's a euphemism for something. <laughs> Look at this. The nightstand is a solid piece of wood carved by a ma by master craftsman for your grandfather as a gift from the eastern reaches of the kingdom. Upon it, rest, upon it rests the wash basin and your book of love poems. Light from the window streams in, adding a rich luster to the already beautiful wood. Ooh, love poems. You note with some embarrassment the splashes and soap foam you've left on the nightstand. Oh well, sloppiness is one of the privileges of being king, and at least you feel clean and ready for and at least you feel clean and ready for your journey. I should have stayed in bed before when I looked at that. It would have been different. I assume. It's a book of love poems given you by your wife as a present on your wedding day. An odd thing for a woman to give a man, but she's a very special woman. You keep it by your bed and leaf through it now and then. My wife needs to be sent to horny jail, apparently. <laughs> um, let's see. Is there a... Uh, are there... No, there's no like hotkeys for uh, for verbs. You consider taking the book in your journey, but stop. It's almost a vow to it's almost a vow to succeed to leave it here, as if you were promising to return and continue reading it without without interrupt interruption. Can I open it. Fondly, you leaf through the pages, skimming well-remembered verses like "How do I love thee? Let me count the ways," and "Soft, what light through yonder window breaks." You think then of Fiona, your wife, and a tear comes to your eyes. You close the book. Suppose you never see her again. Apparently Shakespeare exists in this world. <laughs> you hesitate as you realize that the wash basin is not really yours to take, and after a bit of thought you decide that it is not useful. Take a pillow. <laughs> Don't use a good pillow. Oh, okay. That's a generic cannot take. <laughs> you don't need ceremonial swords, what you need is a good weapon. You know your father had an especially sharp and strong blade sword somewhere about. You'll have to ask someone where to find it. To do that, you'd have to move the robe and crown. You swore not to touch them until the matter of the sorcerer was finally resolved. There's nothing in the chest worth breaking that vow. The crown and robe must remain where they are, as part of your vow to see the destruction of the sorcerer before you take up the mantle of rulership again. You attempt to take, to take, to, ugh, you attempt to take the sconce, but quickly deduce that this action would be a waste of your valuable time and, and, and energy. The brass is almost certainly too hot to handle. You'd only burn yourself if you tried to move it around. The architecture here is both highly decorative and very strong. The carved faces on these arches depict the progenitors of the Kalahak line, King Gorm and his son, Prince Leon. You've got as far as you can go in that direction. Generally, windows in the castle don't open, both for security reasons and because the court positions long ago decided that the chance of vile night humors seeping in an open window more, more than offset the need for fresh air during the day. If you want fresh air, go outside. <laughs> Ooh, neat. I love it when games have, like, close-ups of inventory items. The royal crest is plain and unassuming, as royal symbols should be. The signet is normally used for signing and sealing documents, but this ring has a special power. When its magic is invoked, it will instantly transport you to the way station of Castle Kalahak. Sweet! You give your, the ring a quick rub on your sleeve, and it gleams with all the polish of burnished gold. The mere sight of the connecting door between your chamber and Fiona's sends a little lump of excitement to your throat. It's a silly custom, but most couples, especially royal couples, don't sleep in the same room. Perhaps now that you're king, you can get the custom changed. Meanwhile, you're welcome to, w to enter her room whenever you wish. 
Yes, <laughs> security reasons. This is the Clan Fianula symbol. When you come back, when you come back, this will have to be moved to a place of honor in the king's bedchamber. Fiona has put up several small bunches of flowers about the room. She says this practice adds color and a pleasant smell. She has them replaced two or three times a week. The tapestry depicts a scene from, the, from, a, from a theatrical production at the Great World Theater in Gran Calahat. Fiona is especially fond of musical comedies, but she insists on seeing everything that plays at the world. Like, as in the globe. Again, Shakespeare reference, I think. The small inset bookcase contains some of Fiona's favorite fiction and books of poetry and history. The lower shelf is bare, except for two volumes that look suspiciously like diaries. Ooh! Shall I snoop on the Queen's books? <laughs> First, let me look around the room some more. The niceties of castle protocol demand that the King and Queen sleep in separate chambers, but you are married and it is perfectly acceptable to visit. That's what the connecting door is for. The thought of your wife brings back in full force the magnitude, the magnitude of the peril you are in. You must defeat the sorcerer. You have too much to live for. Aw, he love his wife. Fiona also has a chest at the foot of her bed. Your burning curiosity to know her feelings does not extend to rummaging through her personal belongings. Its contents will remain a mystery. One of Fiona's additions to the room is the throw rod, bought from one of the merchants in the main marketplace. It is unremarkable in every way, but she always called it her absolute favorite color. Okay, note to self, Fiona's favorite color is red. The fields of Grand Calhac spread out below the window, a beautiful pastoral scene to wake up to in the morning. The Queen's window, unlike yours, has private little shutters that you can close at night. You wonder what Master of Etiquette decided that she should have them and the King should not. Somehow the designers of the castle managed to make the Queen's fireplace look softer and more feminine than the King's. The decorative plates are one of Fiona's touches, but she's never been sure what their significance is, and she's never volunteered the information. The wood basket is empty and the fire is blazing, indicating that the servants have been in to stoke the morning fire. Soon another servant will bring a small supply of aromatic wood, should the queen wish to keep the fire going in midday. Snoop, snoop. Your desperate curiosity finally overcomes your natural respect for other people's property. <laughs> ah, you're new to adventure game <laughs> a protagonisting, aren't you? <laughs> Leaping through quickly, you find that the first book is from 20 years ago when the sorcerer was first challenged. The other is very recent. A message in the first book catches your eye. It says, My husband-to-be, the prince, has ridden off with his father and Nertom the wizard. They're going to face the sorcerer Sanway to try to imprison or destroy him forever. I fear for the prince. Will I be a widow before I'm even married? You had no idea she was worried back then. Of course, at 13, you're not always aware of everything going on around you. Okay, so there we go. We, uh... We have an age. So he's 33 now. <laughs> you switch to the second book and spy another interesting entry. Twenty years later and the sorcerer's curse is nigh. My husband, now the king, is in mortal danger. Ner Tom cannot defeat Sanwei. There is no other to help. But we cannot just sit and wait for the sorcerer to strike. I feel so helpless. With a heavy heart, you close the diaries and return them to their place on the shelf. For Fiona's sake, you must defeat the sorcerer. You must. I'm going to defeat the fuck out of that sorcerer. After brief consideration, you decide you don't need the bookcase. Fiona always keeps her night table across the room from the bed. You think it makes no sense, but she claims it keeps her from staying up late reading because there's no place to put the book down. That is also why I uh, keep my phone uh, on, across, on the other side of the room from my bed. <laughs> so that I'm not tempted to like lie in bed on my phone all night. 
This door leads to the Grand Promenade, a large hallway that separates the royal bedchambers from the rest of the function space of the castle. It also, uh, that's also, it also means that when my alarm goes off, I have to get up. <laughs> I can't just hit snooze and go back to sleep. This, the plaque, unlike those in your bedchamber, is a simple symbol of royalty. It marks this door as that of a member of the royal family and lets all servants and visitors know that they better have a good reason to go inside. The statuary is old and pitted and obviously incomplete. It was excavated from the ruins of a lost city, or so the story goes, and brought to Castle Kalahak by an adventurer named Pippi or Poppy or something like that as a gift. Someday you'd like to travel to the mysterious unknown lands, but now you have a more important task. You were never very good at heraldry, and now you can barely remember anything about your, about your family crest or the proper terms to describe it. There's the gold crown on the lavender shield, and the demi-something of silver and mauve on the sinister portion. Oh well. It's your official family crest, in which the crown is the usual shorthand symbol. The exterior door of Fiona's chamber is used by, the, by chambermaids and personal servants. You always use the connecting door between the two rooms. The smaller of the two windows is traditionally for the queen to stand out in the morning and give a cheery good morning wave to her subjects waiting in the courtyard. It's been a tradition for as long as you can remember, and you assume Fiona has no objection to it. The larger of the two windows is traditionally for the king to stand out in the morning and give a cheery good morning wave to his subjects waiting at the courtyard. Your father used to joke about an embarrassing morning on which no one waited below. <laughs> your teachers would be very pleased with your attention to detail, but the floor is pretty insignificant. Wait, it's the finest specimen of a floor you've seen all day. <laughs> the long central table glows at night with soft golden candles by whose, by, by whose height you can tell the time. Now they've all burned down to the stubs. To you, this has always looked like a rug that somebody decided to hang on the wall instead. It's actually some sort of family crest. As much as you'd like to decree its removal, it really should stay where it is. Nice. Scrolling. Legend has it that this is the symbol of the very first clan that married into the Kalahak line. That decoration has been hanging above the door for as long as you can remember. The axes are beautifully made of finely wrought metals. You once referred to them using Fiona's mother's name, thus insulting both your mother-in-law and the axes, and you can't help smiling whenever you look at them. <laughs> Jeez. You're still having a little trouble thinking of this as the door to your chamber. You feel as though your father is going to emerge from it any second now, calling for breakfast and his finance minister, just like always. Aww. Through this door lies one of the one of the most important rooms in the castle, the meeting chamber slash library, where important discussions are held and important books wait to be read. Oh wait. This beautiful cedar chest is where, is where linens are kept to refresh yours and the queen's beds. The cedar gives them pleasant perfume. I want breakfast and my accountant. <laughs> Great combination. This scene depicts some famous hero or other and his trusty Drammel, who supposedly saved his life several times. You have a strong affection for animals, despite the fact that you've never owned a pet. Drammel is apparently the name of the Saurus things. Like Dragon Camel, I guess. <laughs> There's nothing in there but linens and possibly candles for the long table. As before, you discover no exciting hidden panels behind the tapestry, just seamless blank wall. As before? Like, there have been other times I did that? A ceremonial weapon not for use. This one is actually made of, of soft metal and is a recreation of a famous weapon worn by some hero or another in days gone by. This symbol was your father's personal sigil, as distinguished from the, from the royal crest or the family symbol. All these different signs and symbols make your head spin. Like the fireplace, the sconces here are always lit for those late night meetings. You wonder what momentous decisions were made by the light of that sconce. 
This eight-point buck was killed by your grandfather in the eastern forests. The legend has it that they, ki they killed the deer with his bare hands, but your tutor said that was untrue. It was shot with an arrow, as one might expect. There are no other hunting trophies in the entire castle, because your father didn't believe in hunting. You were willing to hunt for food, but not for sport. Yeah. Uh, yes? <laughs> I'm gonna say yes. <laughs> the fire is roaring merrily here, as it always has. This is the one chamber in the castle where the fire is never banked. You would come here at 2 o'clock in the morning, and it, would, and it would be warm and well lit. This is another of the wizard Nur Tom's inventions, the fireplace screen that absorbs heat and radiates it slowly into the room. They're all over the castle. It seems as though the wood basket here is always empty, because since the major domo is constantly checking to make sure the fire is burning brightly. We pity the poor woodcutter who has to, who has to supply this thing. These built-in benches are provided for readers to become so absorbed in their books that they can't be bothered walking over to the love seats. This happened to you, though you can't remember now what book it was that so interested you. This is it, the central hub of the network of power that emanates from Castle Kalhak. Right here at this table, momentous decisions are made that affect the course of nations. It's a very unassuming table. One of many expensive imported rugs in the castle, this one has unique sound absorption qualities, perfect for a meeting slash reading room. You have a vague childhood memory of walking across it in your bare feet. The scene here is of an un unnamed siege of a castle. It was done in the highly stylized method of Greta Flam, but the actual weaver is unknown. Your father liked this particular piece, but as far as you know, it has no special significance. The stylized archer has always been one of your favorite pieces of art, but now it just looks a little silly to you. You seem to have lost your appreciation for art with the shadow of the sorcerer's threat hanging over you. Damn you, sorcerer! Ruining all the things I love. The low table's main purpose is to hold the candle for reading light. The small candlestick has only the barest nub of a candle in it. Tonight it'll be replaced by a fresh candle for those late night readers. They call them love seats because two people trying to sit in one had better be in love. These ingenious little couches can be used in, used in a variety of ways by moving their component parts. Your father always said that for private meetings, comfortable chairs were best. You're not sure if he was only referring to politics. <laughs> You understand that this idyllic outdoors scene is supposed to be Grand Kalahak itself, back when it was first built. It doesn't look much like that now. The apple trees and the sheep and sheep farms have long since been replaced by the sprawl of a market town. Your father's collection of rare volumes includes several apocryphal histories, some fairy fiction, and a six-volume set of the Decadent Empire, a fictional history that your father for forbid you to read when you were young. Now, perhaps, you can see what all the fuss was about. Ooh. Yes. Spicy books, please. Ooh. You try to remove volume one from the shelf, but it, but, but it appears to be stuck to volume two. Whoa! The entire set leans outward, and you hear a faint rumbling noise coming from the east wall. These aren't books at all. They're a secret switch of some kind. Sweet. Ooh, Eureka! Somehow your brain was telling you that there was a secret door behind the tapestry somewhere, and it turns out to be true. This tapestry, of all the ones in the castle, is on glides instead of being fastened to the wall. Now you know why. Neat. Can I? I'm gonna save my game. This is a very odd door. It has no handle or visible latch, just a crown symbol engraved in the wood where the handle should be. Hmm. The door is locked tighter than a drum. With no handle and no locking mechanism in evidence, you can't see any possible way to get it open. No wonder your father never revealed the secret of the door to you. something else that will open that sorry brother I was just thinking and this was a convenient place to sit oh you're evil aren't you and you have designs on the throne I can already tell <laughs> I 
<laughs> uh, let's not give him ideas. <laughs> Think nothing of it, brother. Then perhaps I'll sit there whenever I want. After all, the throne will someday be mine, Kalash. If I do not defeat the sorcerer, it might. True, true. Or perhaps you'll end up in the dungeon one of these days. You know how it is. Can you be any more obviously evil? <laughs> yes. Peace be with you, McMorn. And with you be peace. Oh, I just... Hmm. I left that uh, secret door exposed. Hmm. Well, all right. <laughs> The two special plaques above the throne room doors are not clan symbols, nor family crests, nor even symbols of leadership. They're clever little designs that stand for business for the door that leads to the meeting chamber, and pleasure for the one that goes to the ballroom. <laughs> this fine piece of work depicts the le a legendary evil, the Dragon of Dark Flame. Near Tom, the old wizard, used to speculate that the sorcerer Sanway has been making his magical raids upon Kalahak for generations, and once was the Dragon of Dark Flame. That might explain why Sanway is known as the Dragon Sorcerer. There is! There's tons of it! And I'm kind of loving it. <laughs> so much world building. The chairs to the side of the room are for important personages, diplomats from foreign lands and so forth, to sit and wait for the entrance of the king or queen. Once royalty enters the room, all visitors must stand. The table is sometimes used for the signing of important documents or the presentation of diplomatic gifts. But more often than not, it is simply an elbow rest for elderly guests. Can't sit on the chair, can I? No. <laughs> Excuse me. The floor here is made of a very special material produced by the magics of Nur Tom, the court wizard. It resists marking by metal shod boots, hardly ever needs washing, and is never slippery. A true marvel. Why can't the whole castle ma be made out of that? The two red carpets are the ceremonial pathways for the king and queen to take when leaving the throne room to enter the council chamber. Once upon a time, there was a decree that no other should walk upon the carpets of royalty, but the lawmaker forgot that the carpets spend the length of the room. No one pays attention to the law anymore. <laughs> this magnificent sigil is a rendition of the coronation of the first Kalahak king. He is called Heavenly Dominic, or Domus the Great, and he supposedly carved out the kingdom of Kalahak from a mountain, pl from mountain placed in his path by the god Cal. You're sure the truth is much less fanciful, but you're but no less spectacular in its own way. This door leads to the, to the meeting room where private conversations can take place. It is most often used to make deals with individual members of the nobility before a council meeting or to entertain a visiting dignitary in a less pompous style. This door leads to the ballroom where gala affairs are held after serious council meetings or diplomatic exchanges. Twice a year, this door is opened to the peasants after a day of judgment, and the, feeling, and the feasting and revelry goes on until the next morning. Through this door, the dwellers outside can enter the castle. The courtyard outside is a holding area of sorts when the peasants gather here on days of judgment. It is behind that door that the real business of the kingdom is decided. Here in the throne room, affairs de dealing with the peasantry are judged with great pomp and circumstance, but the, but the council of nobles decides the true course of the kingdom. The thrones are simple affairs, unadorned by jewels or other shows of wealth. Your father didn't believe in the monarchy being extravagant. The queen's throne is where Fiona will sit, possibly as head of state should you fail to return. Uh, th this throne is now yours, the place from which all decisions regarding peasant law are handed down. It is an icon of crushing responsibility mixed with absolute power. You associate it so strongly with your father that you can almost see him still sitting there. His ghost! The table that rests between the thrones is normally for holding documents and gifts received from, received from visiting dignitaries. Now, though, it holds the dragon sphere as a reminder of the immediacy of the problem. The thrones are raised up above the rest of the floor in order to make their position more dominating and to put the king and queen more on eye level with those that are required to stand in their presence. <laughs> Neat. Oh, he moved. The small sphere rests quietly on its stand where Nur Tom placed it 20 years ago. It is a warning, an alarm of sorts, whose integrity mimics that of the shield spell holding Sanway prisoner. I almost read that as Samus. 
Its occupant, a small dragon homunculus, mimics the state of the sorcerer himself. It is the cracks in the sphere and the stirrings of the dragon that have warned you that Sanwei is breaking free from his long captivity. You consider taking the sphere with you to keep an eye on Sanwei's state of consciousness, but it is far too heavy to carry. Oops. Ah, no. The sphere feels much like crystal, but it is not a physical thing. It is a spell sphere created by Nerton. It is cold and hard to the touch, and you can feel the roughness where the cracks have begun to spread across its surface. Ominous! <laughs> These small steps are placed at the foot of each throne to make the king and queen's ascension more dignified. In fact, court etiquette demands that both feet be placed on the step before placing a foot on the platform, but your father always used to stride directly to the platform, and could then should be damned. My father was cool. <laughs> By age-old agreement, the thrones are sacrosanct. The king is never to sit in the queen's throne, and the queen is never to sit in the king's, even if she is sole monarch. Aww. And sit. Wow, a rare adventure game where you are actually allowed to sit down. <laughs> it's always, I don't have time to sit around. But in this game, I do. Oh, it's a mess in here. The walls here are of rougher construction than in the rest of the castle, supposedly because they ran out of marble at the nearby quarry and had to use extra granite. The floor here is made of crushed stones, better to absorb the inevitable spills of food and wine. It looks like the week's revelries have taxed it beyond the limit of its capacity. There are several spills and bones in evidence, and a dutiful, scull and a dutiful scullery maid helping to clean it all up. Still smelling of roast boar and turkey, the large brazier in the middle of the room is cold now, and the spit has been removed, presumably for cleaning. It makes your stomach rumble to smell the leftover cooking odors. You'll have to get something to eat before you begin your journey. This table still has a bowl of apples on it, but they look to be a week old. They're starting to wrinkle. Your personal goblet is here also, left out for anyone to pick up. <laughs> your personal jewel-encrusted goblet is sitting out on the table. Much of the other crockery and metalware has been re removed for cleaning, but somehow this piece got overlooked. I'll take that. With a muffled oath at someone's carelessness, you take the goblet and store it in your traveling pack, lest someone overlook it and throw it in the servant's tub. Oops. This is the goblet you used at the coronation celebration. It's the king's goblet, more ornate than the others, and slightly more valuable. During celebrations, the wall is festooned with flowers and vines. They've been removed now that the celebrations are over. Apparently this custom is where, the, is where the term wallflower comes from. The shy people stay at this end of the room, next to the flower wall. This scene is an idyllic lake at sunset. You don't remember where it came from, but your father always claimed it was good, was good for his digestion. When there is a function here, extra tapers and torches are brought in. The brazier in the center of the room provides light also. The two permanent torches are set high and away to avoid setting anyone's fine, finery on fire. The chairs at the far end of the room are for, are for wallflowers. You remember spending a lot of time at that end of the ballroom before you met Fiona. Your father once called you the Shy Prince. Aww. So cute. Some scraps of food are still lying on the floor, having been missed by the servants in their first cleaning pass. A turkey leg, hardly touched, catches your eye. Bones are always useful in adventure games. You never know when you might uh, run into an angry dog or something. Eating partly eaten food, even food that's been on the ground, has never bothered you. You don't have time for a formal meal, so you grab the bone. <laughs> this is a partly gnawed bone from some unidentified animal. There is quite a bit of well-cooked meat still on the bone. Cold meat was never your favorite, but it might, but it might serve if you get really hungry. Or if I find an eagle starving in the mountains. <laughs> 
Although partially clean, this table still has half a loaf of stale bread. You'll wait and see if you can't find something a little more appetizing for breakfast. And several bottles. Somebody must have broken the bench. It's been removed from the room. The grand window looks out over the castle courtyard and way station, where the travelers gather before entering and leaving the castle. It's quite a view. The door at the far end of the ballroom leads back to the large hall connected to sleeping chambers and the function spaces. It's extra heavy and sound deadening in case someone wants to sleep during a party. Smart. A dutiful castle servant is scrubbing manfully, or is it madefully, at the spills on the floor. You don't remember her name, but she served your father well for almost a year now. Greetings, most dutiful maiden. Tis hard work, my lord, but I do it gladly. Well done, maiden. Keep up the good work. You flatter a simple scullery maid with your attentions, my lord. That echo. <laughs> well done, maiden. Thank you for noticing me, my king. King Zama noticed me. <laughs> ah. Oops. Oh, but I'd be at your beck and call if you wished. Oops. I accidentally skipped that. Greetings, most. Good morning, my lord. Oh. I trust you slept well. Well done, maiden. Tis hard work, my lord, but I do it gladly. Greetings, most. Good morning, my lord. I Hello. trust you slept well. Well done, maiden. Tis hard work, my lord, mm. but I do it gladly. Ah, tis pity I'm married, I'd say. Oh, there it is. Oh, but I'd be at your beck and call if you wished. <laughs> King Pie. Root through a haystack. Your teacher. Oh, I've seen that. The windows are firing slits. Behind them are stations for archers coming from the guard keeps. As an invading army enter the courtyard, they will be subject to a deadly crossfire. The main gate leads out to the way station where the merchants and travelers gather. The portcullis is up. It's only lowered at night and in times of trouble. The barrels store various items used by the merchants and guards at the way station. This one looks like it contains salt. The other might contain sling balls. The ground of the courtyard is scored by Dremel's hoofs and the wagon tracks from the, from, from, the, bleh, from the supply wagons that drop their stores here. Hay is kept for the Dremels that are often temporarily tethered here. This stack looks like it was just delivered to the hay wagon. It still smells sweet and fresh. The barrels store various items used by the merchants and guards at the way station. These look and smell like they contain salted foods, pickles, and spices. <laughs> Thank you. I, I, this, I mean, I didn't so much find this one. It was just dumped into my into my games library for free because, like, it's on GOG, and they just like there's it's one of the free games you can get on GOG. You wouldn't want the contents to spoil, would you? Besides, the barrels are nailed shut and couldn't be closed again if opened. What's in that haystack? So yeah, I've had this game for a long time, and there's never, uh, never bothered to play it until now. When you were a child, you used to love searching through the he through the hay. You never found anything except once you found the lady's knickers, but that doesn't stop you from trying. After a brief search, you come to the conclusion that there's nothing in here, not even a needle. Well, that's because I haven't made friends with the local ants <laughs> to have them search for me. A guard ceaselessly patrols atop this battlement, where more archers will be stationed where the castle will be invaded. The openings at either end lead into the guard keeps. The guard patrols tirelessly, watching for intruders, miscreants, and brawls that might break out between visiting dignitaries or peasants. His main duties include sounding the alarm and raising and lowering the portcullis. Oops. No. Guard, talk to me. The guard nods his acknowledgement, but he clearly can't hear you, for he says nothing more. Okay, hang on. Before I leave, I want to go. There's a... Uh... in here yet.
Here we go. You've seen the dragon sphere. I pray you're not still resolved to go alone. I am. Tiernock Bronway is deadly, my lord. Why not wait safely here? Hide from the sorcerer, or at least meet him on your own ground. If we wait, San Wei will only become San more Wee. powerful as he recovers from the spell of imprisonment. I must go to his tower before he wakes fully. And has had his coffee. Will you not reconsider and take the army, my lord? I beg you. Nay, even weakened, the sorcerer has powerful spells that can destroy an army once he knew they were coming. One man traveling alone is anonymous. This is my responsibility and the legacy of my father. I will face the sorcerer alone. He is headstrong, like his father. Let us gift him and wish him Godspeed. Who is this lady? She looks awesome. Thank you. I have for you a sword of magical sharpness. May you use it to strike San Wee's head from his shoulders. Hell yeah. <clears throat> Although it is said that no sword may harm San Wei, perhaps she it will have other way. uses. And I have for you a small shielding spell, like the one that surrounds San Wei's tower. Hurl this sphere at an enemy to imprison him within a field of magic. Excellent. These were my fathers, were they not? I know, right? <laughs> Hardcore. <laughs> that's right. And they never failed him. Oh, right. That's my mom. May they never fail you. Goodbye, my son. I was trying to remember because like, cause, cause my wife said that it was her. She was going to wait for me and along with someone else. And I couldn't remember who she said was the other person. But that's my mother. <laughs> Rad. Good luck, husband. Please be careful. My mother is a badass. <laughs> I love the way she's dressed, too. She looks like a... She looks like a He-Man villain. <laughs> I'm digging her style. <laughs> there are clan symbols and other heraldic signs all over the castle. This room is no exception. Oh, these are the things. Okay, they didn't actually give them to me, but they're right there on the table. Great. Good. Excellent. Fire burns brightly here so that the barons can see to write their important missives. The chairs are designed in royal purple to remind everyone upon whose sufferance they meet. The chairs are deliberately plain so as not to appear in conflict with the royal thrones. Like somebody in Dune, yes! <laughs> the candles in the chandelier are lit the, are lit the morning of a council meeting by the major domo, who must use a special ladder and the candle on the desk. It sheds a soft, even light over the entire table. The fireplace here is extra large and cozy for those councils that drag on into the late evening hours. Apparently, your mother moved the screen from in front of the fireplace before it was lit this morning. She always argued with Nir Tom about the, about the virtue of these other things, and with it having disappeared, she has taken matters into her own hands. Ah, so she's that type of mother. <laughs> The painting depicts an early council, or possibly a banquet, you're never sure which. Whichever it is, everyone seems to be cooperating, which you hope is an, is an inspiration to those holding council here. She's a, uh, she's a formidable woman. I'll say that about her. On the morning of a meeting today, of, of a meeting day, the Major Domo uses that candle to light the many candles of the chandelier. The royal scribe sits at the desk, scribbling frantically to record the words spoken by everyone at council meetings, which often last for hours. Your father jokingly referred to the shorthand notes as minutes or moments. Anything in the desk? You attempt to open the desk, but quickly realize that this action would be a waste of your valuable time and energy. Aww. This gorgeous rug was a gift from the Dukey of De Summers almost, almost a generation ago. Your father speculated that soon the entire floor would be covered with rugs, but no other noble ever offered such a gift. Is it Dukey? Duchy? Duchy? That's a word I'm never quite sure how to say. That table has seen more history than any library full of chronicles. The library has only what people have written. At the table, kingdoms have toppled and be been rebuilt in a single afternoon. Duchy. On the morning of a council meeting, the ink is replaced by the Major Domo. Since there will be no more meetings until your quest is over, the bottles have been capped. 
Each of the nobles has pen and ink and paper. The, uh, the better to prepare speeches, take notes, and make instant treaties. Your father once grumbled that the nobles spent more time writing than listening. One of the nobles apparently left behind some papers. You start, to turn, you start to turn away, but a burning curiosity born of your perilous situation makes you look again. The notes are fragmentary, as if he was composing a letter or a proclamation. It reads as follows, as if he were composing a letter or a proclamation. It reads as follows. If the tales are true, the sorcerer Sanwe is about to emerge from the tower and wreak terrible vengeance. The court magician, Nur Tom, has disappeared. It is the king's only hope to venture forth and duel with the sorcerer himself. The king decrees no baron intercede in this matter. Would I have been brave enough and loyal enough to volunteer? Perhaps that is why he made his decree, so none of us will be forced to make that choice. He is a good king. The noble that, is, that has this seat has left behind some writing. It is a note of some kind that was either passed or to or from one of the other nobles. It reads as follows. Do you like me? Why, N? <laughs> but if the king were to die as, a, as the sorcerer has decreed, what then? Like Morn is the king's brother, but he is cruel and greedy and not fit to rule. What other choice have we? A bloody succession war? Which of us will agree to make the other king? These papers are all blank. The baron of this seat is a cautious man and made sure that none of his notes and messages were left in the seat where others might read them. You know, like a smart person. He's also the type of person who would leave his computer locked, whereas the other two would leave it unlocked. <laughs> Each set of pen, paper, and ink bottle belongs to the noble whose traditional seat it is placed before. Besides, where you're going, you see no need for pen, ink, and paper. Your mother's gift is the sword you've been seeking. Apparently she had it in safekeeping after your father took ill. How like both of them for your mother to have given you the sword and your wife the shield. Your wife's gift gleams on the table with a faint blue sheen, a characteristic color for magic spells. She probably got it from their tom long ago as a form of personal protection and now she's giving it to you. Your heart is again fired with the resolve to succeed at your quest. The shimmering gray sphere feels warm to your touch as you secrete it in your, in your traveler's pouch, easily accessible for quick use. Secret it. Secret. <laughs> you lift the sword, feeling its comforting heft before attaching it to your belt. As an afterthought, you flip your cloak over the scabbard, since he had seen the king armed, armed as if for battle might alarm some people. Attack, carve up, thrust. <laughs> The small gray sphere shimmers with pent-up power. Merely hurling it at something that at something would enclose that thing in an impenetrable field of magical force. This sword has belonged to the Kalahak clan for generations. It is the finest work of the craftsman Galthwid, and although not magical, is, is perhaps the strongest and sharpest sword of the kingdom. Ooh, there's a guard room. The large door at the south end of the room leads to the guard station outside the dungeon. Very occasionally, an unruly noble, or one who has been speaking treason, is carried off to the dungeon, but that hasn't happened since your grandfather's time. Obviously, this place was carved out of the rock without much thought for architecture or aesthetics. At least the night creatures seem to find it a good home. You can't imagine what it would be like to have guard duty here. You'll have to look into that when you return. The floor here is packed dirt. It was never overlaid with wood or even mixed with stone. The whole chamber seems dug out of the ground as an afterthought. The door at the top of the stairs leads to the council chamber. It is always closed during council meetings, but acts as a reminder to the nobles of the power of the uh, but acts as a reminder to the nobles of the power of the monarchy and the danger of sedition. Aw, oh, there's like little eyes watching me. <laughs> The grand total of the equipment you provide your guards is this one table and the stool that goes with it. You understand that asceticism is part of military discipline, but this is too much. You'll have to have a talk with the captain of the guard. The poor guard who has to sit on this, prob on this probably curses the days he, he and his prisoner were born. You wonder who has it worse. At least the prisoner has some straw to lie down on. You'll have to see about improving conditions here a little bit. The door to the cell is especially thick and has a small iron grating so, th so the guard can check the prisoner. There are several scratch marks around the latch, indicating someone's attempts at escape. 
Some parts of the wall seem to have broken loose and come tumbling down. Not a very sound structure. You get the feeling that the whole place might collapse any minute. It may be time for an overhaul. Rocks are always useful. Can I have some rocks? After brief consideration, you decide you don't need the rocks. Alas. Don John. Nice cell. The floor here is of packed earth and stone, dark with the stains of much spilled food, wine, and blood. It shows some faint signs of attempts to dig out. This is not a very nice place at all. The walls are solid stone, of better quality than those in the guard room. At least no furry friends are visible here. The walls show signs of attempts to dig to freedom. Obviously this cell is meant to hold up the three prisoners, chained to the wall if need be. The guard in the other room would normally carry the keys to the irons. Somebody managed to bring a piece of chalk into the cell with him and was using the wall to mark off the days. You wonder what transpired during his 15-day stay. The tattered straw bedding has been changed recently, thank goodness. It is mean and, uncom and uncomfortable looking, but that is a lot of prisoners. The idea of carrying this stuff around with you turn turns your stomach. Overcoming your natural revulsion, you sniff briefly through the straw of the bedding, but find nothing of interest or value. An underground river rushes by beneath the floor beneath the floor grate. The grate serves as a privy and disposal. The river carries things away, and since there is a steady flow from an underground spring, a supply of fresh drinking water. It will be impossible for a prisoner to escape via the river because of grates set into the river's path upstream and downstream. Hmm. That doorway is the sole means of egress from the dungeon cell. It leads back to the guard room. This is a very empty castle. Hey, hey, fail fink. Welcome. Let's see, is there anywhere in this castle I've not been yet? Well, there is that secret door, but I don't, uh... Actually... Well. No. Doing pretty good! How are you? my room again. Okay, I think that's everything. Actually, maybe uh, maybe the queen is in her room now that I've talked to her in the uh, council chamber. Maybe I can hang out with the queen some more. No, guess not. The scullery maid's bucket is filled to the brim with sudsy water. The water is slowly taking on a brownish color as she goes about her work. Give me your bucket. No. <laughs> I mean, at least it's just a cold. <laughs> It's just a cold. All right. As you examine the market grounds more closely, you realize that they are little more than market grounds. <laughs> 
The captain of the Queen Mother's Guard is a tough, capable woman not much older than yourself. Yay, female guards! Thank you! She took a deep facial scar as a small child, but tells the cadets you received it during a battle as a way to frighten them. Though she is loyal first to your mother and then to you, you have mutual respect and admiration for one another. I like her already. From the outside, the castle looks smaller than it actually is. You feel a mixed sense of pride and fear as you gaze at the structure. It is at once a pleasing symbol of your independence and status, and a crushing burden of responsibility and control. The castle's main gate leads back, to, back into the courtyard. At night, the portcullis is lowered and the guards are increased. During the day, travelers and petitioners arriving at the waystation are ushered in to make their petitions before the king and queen. The merchants here grant a special permission to sell at the castle gate and have a one-year unrenewable license. This stall sells a variety of meats and fish, cured for travel. The proprietor has stepped out for a moment, the captain of the Queen Mother's Guard is keeping her eye on things. This doll uh, oh no. Interesting. Uh, this doll sells, sells fowl and beef jerk for travel, as well as hardy winter fruits. The proprietor looks like a pleasant and honest fellow. Shape changer? This is a man from S oh god. <laughs> I'm gonna butcher this name. From Slothany Patan, the land of the shape changers. I, th there's a lot of like Celtic ish names in this game, and I'm probably going to mispronounce them terribly, and I apologize. And if you, uh, if you can correct my pronunciation, please do so. <laughs> he looks normal enough, but rumors are abound about the, about the perfidy of the shape changers. If the stories were all true, everyone in Slothan would be a liar, thief, or murderer. The well is a communally owned water source for the castle and way station. It is fed by the, by the same underground river, upstream of course, that acts as a disposal for the dungeon cell. Rumor has it that if you throw a coin into the well, you can get the you can get a wish granted. I do not have any coins. Yeah, I know a little bit about uh, about like Gaelic pronunciation, but probably not enough. <laughs> This hedge has been carefully tended for generations. Originally, it kept the grazing animals of the fields out of the castle, but your grandfather, as part of his expansion of the, mo the monarchy, bought or annexed all the nearby lands. In the distance, the, the forest of Cal's Hunt extends to within two bowshots of the castle. The forest is said to stretch for 1,000 miles to the east into the unknown lands. The fertile fields of Grand Calahac and the farms surrounding it are one of the great sources of wealth for the kingdom. When the sorcerer ravages the land and makes his demands, it often takes the form of, the form of burning up crops and the, and the demand of pr tribute, partly in food. It is Akuza, the light blue sky in the tongue of your ancestors. This is supposedly a good omen for travelers just setting out, but you've heard rival scholars claim that such a journey is cursed, often instead for Mark, the dark blue sky. So much for omens. Uh, there are always two buckets at the well, one to be lowered to get water and the other to carry the water to the travelers and merchants at the way station. Right now, the travel bucket is nearly full with fresh water. The handle on the crank seems to be broken, making it extremely difficult to raise and lower the bucket. Someone has kindly gone to the trouble of filling the bucket. The cobblestone road leading away from the way station extends across the boundaries of the kingdom. This is its source point, the beginning of the road that will take you to the high tower mountains in a confrontation with Sunway. There's a fairy! Softus Ecliptus. This strange gray man is a Softus Ecliptus, a desert nomad from the southern reaches. They rarely come to civilized lands. This must be a special occasion. The merchant looks like he might have been sampling a few too many of his own wares. He's a jolly, pleasant fellow who always has good prices. What looks like a little boy is actually an adult fairy, although adult is hardly a good word for describing these flighty, childlike forest creatures. Okay, this game has shape changers and fairies, and I love it. <laughs> Let's talk to everybody. Greetings, guardsmen. What traveler's news is there? The fairy is here as an ambassador. He's giddy and childish. The Soptus Ecliptus is here to trade. He speaks of their caliph as if he were as powerful as you, your majesty. The Slathan is roaming. Slathan. He made some rude comments about my scar, so I have my eye on him. One false move, and... <laughs> I, God. Uh-huh. 
the voice acting in this game is um meh <laughs> but every it's so charming otherwise that i will give it a pass <laughs> stilted yeah keep up the good work captain just doing my duty to you and the queen mother lord it's a bis a bisque <laughs> Yeah, I know very little about this game. It is very King's Quest-y, but like, I'm also getting like, kind of Black Cauldron vibes a little bit. There's just, there's clearly like a lot of thought that went into like the backstory and history of this game. Um, and I love that. I love, I love it when like, the game world is so well detailed, but doesn't like throw it in your face. Like you actually have to look for the information yourself. Keep up the good work. All's quiet, your majesty. Greetings, Captain. Any other news? Just doing my duty to you and the Queen Mother, Lord. Inca, oh god. <laughs> I've heard a little bit about that game. I've heard it's it's impenetrable. <laughs> Very good, Captain. Just doing my duty to you and the Queen Mother, Lord. Oops. So you're the king, eh? Listen, if you're traveling, you have to visit Slaithen Nipatan. Yes, I, I do. Why do you crave this boon? I want you to see the way your subjects are treated, feared, and hated by others, outcasts in our own land. Why do you let this go on? Hmm, yeah, there might be. I mean... Might, might be because of this guy, or might be uh, racism against this guy and his people. I don't understand. Why does this happen? Our shifting powers are shunned by the other races. They're afraid we'll take their very identities away from them. We're so misunderstood. If only you would come to Slaithen and speak to our wise men, you wouldn't be so ignorant. So you're a shapeshifter, eh? I that I am, and I apologize for being blunt. We shapeshifters can be defensive, given the way we're treated by the other races. Would it be so tough to visit our land? If other matters allow, I will come to see your plight. Ask about the Cave of Shifting Dreams. You'll learn much there. Everyone does. Sounds cool. Greetings, man of Slaven. Greetings, King. <laughs> That's your majesty to you. <laughs> Greetings, ma Greetings, King. <laughs> Bet you can't do a triangle. <laughs> oh, I can jump down the well. <laughs> oh, wait, I actually can. Oh, wow. Interesting. The rope is frayed and aged by long use and damp conditions. It can bear the weight of its bucket, but could never hold you. There is a bucket with fresh water right here by the well. No need to go through the labor of cranking up the other bucket. I bet you can't do a parallelogram. Fine wares for my king's journey at a special price. Uh, do I have any money? I'll take some fruit. And water from the well for good measure. Goodbye, my lord. Okay, I guess I do have money. The hearty winter fruits look very appetizing and will certainly be useful for warding off both hunger and illness. Cool. Fine wares for my king's journey at a special price. I have all I need, but let's chat for a bit. At your service, Majesty. Just how did you know I was going on a journey? Rumors are everywhere. One is that you travel to face the dread sorcerer in the High Tower Mountains. Say, Your Majesty, I hear tell of strange bird creatures that dwell in those mountains. Maybe you'll tell me if those rumors are truth when you return. Ooh, bird creatures. I thank you for your confidence. If only I shared it. Shaw, Majesty. 
Neglect not the little things, and the large shall take care of themselves, as my pappy used to say. <laughs> but... Hmm, okay, yeah. A wise man. Hi, as you are. Good luck, my lord. Aw, thanks, buddy. <laughs> yeah, when I read you're charging the king, I, I uh, immediately... My brain immediately went to uh, the Mies tweet. <laughs> you charge the king? Jail for merchant! Jail for 1,000 years! <laughs> Greetings, man of softness, Ecliptus. What is your name? My name is Tilshavet, the Traveler. <laughs> I come from Desert Far, a message to bring to thee. Our kingdoms, too, have enjoyed prosperity large. We are friends great. But never have you visited our caliph. All right, Jigsaw. <laughs> Jesus, he's terrifying. Why suggest this now? You have never before asked for such a visit. Well said. Time is now, for our shamans have discovered portents large concerning you. Mystery is many our shamans can untangle. Caliph also desires visit. He also is... Slightly Yoda-ish in his speech. How can a man alone cross the desert? There are friends of the softest living in the desert. With friends, any man can cross the desert great. Cool. Perhaps I could come later, after I have dealt with the sorcerer. Pekadoli mekratum, epkali abrastum, as my people say. This means, if you don't prepare, then you will be late. Understand? Quest important you may have, but time is now to prepare with visit. I tell you extra secret little. Admiration lavish is softest way. This impressed greatly, Caliph. Okay. Could you tell me again, what was that phrase you used? I probably want to write that down. Ah... Taking notes. <laughs> you mean pecadoli mikratum et kali ablastum? It means if you don't prepare, then you will be late. Pecadoli mikratum. I could also just take a screenshot, but no, no, we're doing this the old-fashioned way. Ep ka li. Abrastum. If you don't prepare, ah, then you will be late. Okay. He also said that uh, the the softest ecliptus way is is. Lavish praise, and I should remember that when I meet the Caliph. Farewell for now, King of the North. Greetings again, Tilshimet. There is something else I wish to ask you. Very well. I listen. Could you tell me again? You mean farewell for now, King of the North. Okay. Fairy! Hee hee, lucky me. Come to look, and the king I see. Oops. Sorry, majesty. Fairies speak in rhyme to annoy fair ones like you. It's a bad habit. <laughs> Weirdly, not that annoying. <laughs> fair ones, you mean humans, right? Oops. Sorry. Yes. You call yourself humans. I don't know why, but all fairies call humans fair ones. Interesting, because that's kind of the opposite. Like, we call the fairies the fair folk. Why do you seek to annoy fair ones? Because it's fun. Our wise men argue the question endlessly and have lots of theories. Testing our limits, learning fair one behavior, hidden hostility. 
I don't know. Perhaps you should ask our king. I like how they're all be, they're all like, "Hey, king, you should come visit our our king our our country." And I'm like, "Yeah, all right." <laughs> there is a fairy king. Yes, indeed, the great butterfly king, oldest living fairy and great friend to the fair ones. Butterfly Surely king. Surely you must meet him. That rules. For he is a powerful magician. If the rumors of your quest are true. You owe it to yourself to see the Butterfly King first. And where will I find the Great Butterfly King? Seek the magic forest of Bryn Fan and get ready for the trial of the forest maid. Oh boy. If you can succeed at that, they will let you see our king. Sorry, Lord, but that is our law when dealing with fair ones. Oh boy, a maze. <laughs> ah, so nice to have met you. I must go now. Goodbye, King of the Fair. May your children be a blessing to you. Aw, that's sweet. Greetings, Ambassador of Bryn Fan. And hello to you, King of the Fair. Be sure to speak with the Butterfly King, if you can. That's cool. Like it sounds like they they got like an actual child to do the voice acting, and not terribly annoying. Like sounds like a child, and is not like being overly like shrieky and, and and precocious oh i have to jump down the well i have to jump down the well <laughs> gotta do that hey <laughs> Oh. <laughs> oh dear. You must have done something dreadfully wrong. Perhaps you'd like another chance to set things right. <laughs> okay, so it just it just it doesn't it doesn't make you restore. It just goes, "Oh, let's pretend you didn't do that." <laughs> D you're right. Yeah, like that that was like an underground river. Well, it said that, though, didn't it? I think it said that. Yeah, communally owned water source, fed by the same underground river that acts as a disposal for the dungeon cell. But yeah, like, that's not, like, your typical well. And, like, hold on, also, uh, well, yeah. I can't look down it, can you? Um. But yeah, like, you'd think that the, the bucket, you know, would just go straight into the water, which it doesn't seem to do, it just goes to the ground. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess... Do I not get, like, a... a I want a... I want a Dremel. Ooh, alright, cool. Oh, there's, like, all kinds of places I could go. I can go to all the places. All the... All the... Hmm. Where should we go first? Uh, I guess I'll go here first because I talked to that guy first. I'm wondering if there's like. Actually, hold on. Let me just before I before I do anything else, let me just save again. All right. Then we'll leave. <laughs> <laughs> this game is so stylish. I love it. I love the aesthetic of this game. It's so cool. So this is pretty. A protected land. What is your business? I am the king. Step aside and let me pass. I beg pardon, Majesty. None may enter this land without escort. Even you. Especially you. Why can no one travel alone? You know the tales, Majesty. If a lone person ventures mm. into Shifter land, the dirty shifters will kill him, take the likeness of the victim, and emerge pretending to be him. If we didn't patrol the borders night and day, they might murder us in our sleep. You'd never know if your wife or best friend was actually a shifter. But you're a shifter. 
They are my subjects and deserve respect. Respect? Ha! They're filthy, creepy thieves and they should all be exterminated. Oh, fuck you. Begging your pardon, but you know it's true. Despite your feelings, I must enter this land. Not without you have a companion, my lord. Hmm. I am the king, and you will let me pass. When we took this post, we swore an oath to do our duty, no matter the tricks, bribes, or trials to which we would be subjected by the dirty shifters. We must do our duty, lord. If you are truly the king, you will understand that. Very well. I will leave and think on this. Okay. Farewell in your travels. Well, they want an escort, so I guess I just can't... I just can't come alone. Hmm. Hmm. Could I... Could I perhaps... Did not give me the option to stab him, unfortunately. I just automatically left. Greetings, man of Slayton. Greetings, king. Oh, I can't, like... Ask him to come with me. How about you? How about the guard, Captain? She probably won't come with me either. Very good, Captain. Carry on. Just doing my duty to you and the Queen Mother, Lord. All right. Well, maybe, uh, maybe I'll find someone else to accompany me. If the only issue is that I need an escort, then surely I can find one somewhere. Then let's go to Softus Ecliptus. A lovely desert journey. Oh gosh. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> I don't have any water. I have the fruit, I guess, but am I just gonna, is this just an instant death? I'm just gonna wander into the desert and die. <laughs> King's Quest has, has traumatized me. <laughs> Never go into the desert without water. The desert is so wide and the sun is so hot. Just when you think you must surely perish here in the dry sands, and you curse the softest who sent you here, you spy a, you spy a small lean-to in the distance. A friend! Any man can cross the great desert if he has friends. The lean-to looks small and rude and partially buried beneath the sand, but, but you can see someone moving about near it. And it doesn't seem to be armed or particularly dangerous looking. Friend! Friend, please! Friend. The sky is wide and bright, deadly with the hot rays of the sun. Ooh, bones. The pile of bones is the remains of this softest trader's dinner. There's still a bit of meat here and there if you're hungry. The sign is a few runes with the softest language on it. You know enough to know it probably points the way back to your own kingdoms. The desert looks exactly the same to you in all directions. If you didn't know the direction of the sun, you'd be completely lost. The softest trader looks the same as all the other softest, tall and gray with those huge black eyes. He is smiling. The trader's lean to is a jury rigged contraption consisting of a blanket <coughs> excuse me, slung over several wooden poles. The sand itself acts as an anchor. You wonder if it's really any cooler there in the shade. Can I have your bones? Oh. You already have an animal bone. You really don't need any more right now. Please be my friend. Greetings, man of Softus Ecliptus. Can you help me? Uh... Uh... I do not know what that means. <laughs> Uh <laughs> Hmm. 
I don't speak your language. Ep Kodoli Akarta. Hmm. Perhaps we should start over again. Me. Greetings, man of sun. Ka Vicky Odom Tra 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 Shap. Am I gonna have to like work out their language? Because if so, hell yes. Pekadoli Mekratum. Epkali Abrastum. Sheshka Akardum, Clem. Hmm. If you say so. Dwebuch. Kodoli Trasoptus. Interesting. Okay. Hmm. The sign is not made for pushing. Well, uh... Alright. Let's go back. Alright, let's try Bryn Fan. And tackle a maze. <laughs> that sounds like great fun. I actually don't mind mazes so much. As long as they make sense. <laughs> well, this looks much more pleasant. The grounds here are immaculately kept, except for the mushrooms dotting the lawn. Little mushrooms, or maybe they're toadstools, dot the grass all around you. They look edible, but you've never been fond of mushrooms. The rocks and the grass seem almost artful in their placement. To the north, a pile of rocks and rougher ground blocks the way. Fairy is small and feminine looking, though they're all like that though they're all like that, so it's hard to tell the sex of this one. It occasionally grins at you in an annoying way. Hey, don't use it. The large boulder is now being used as a resting place by a saucy looking fairy. Frogs! Topiary toads! Toad Pieris! <laughs> With a well-trimmed hedge runs in all directions away from here. The only visible entrance is the pass between the topiary toads. Fairies like their privacy. Well, that's cool. The amazingly lifelike hedge carvings are a wonder to behold. The guardian globe appears as a coruscating ball of color, but you sense that it is alive in some semi-magical way. Here comes a fairy, dressed in a cape. If he had any more hair, he'd look like an ape. <laughs> and a good day to you, my fine fairy. The fair fights back with biting wit. What a shame he's used all of it. <laughs> I should uh, give as good as I get. I've more wit in my left hand than you've got in your whole miserable body. There one comes, Fairy Francis. To get inside, you've missed your chances. Oh. <laughs> How can I miss what I wasn't offered? It's not fair. Come back some other time and we'll play some more. Hmm, okay. Here comes a fair, dressed in a cape. If he had any more hair, he'd look like an ape. And you look like a little monkey, fairy. The fair fights back with biting wit. Hmm. What a shame he's used all of it. Your insults are getting pretty weak, small one. Fair one comes, fairy hmm. prances. To get inside, you've missed your chances. Thank you. May your children be a blessing to you. Come back some other time and we'll play some more. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Well, what happens if I just walk into the maze? Oops. Didn't mean to do that. Wait. 
<laughs> the Guardian Globe gives no sense of intelligence or understanding. It feels alive, but it has no will of its own. It's a strange glowing ball is blocking your way. It seems to be alive, but in a dull and single-minded way. All right, well, I guess let's get, uh, try and get violent. <laughs> Here comes a fair. Hold your tongue in the presence of the King of Grand Kalahak. The fair fights back with biting wit. What a sh- I seek the Butterfly King. Is this the way to the forest maze? Fair one comes, Fairy Francis. To get inside, you've missed your chances. Stop talking in rhyme now, or I'll slice your head off. Come back some other time, and we'll play some more. Um. <laughs> Though it looks like the fairy is alone and helpless before your superior strength, there's no telling what's on the other side of the hedge, or if there are other fairies lurking about, or if this one has magical defenses. Besides, it wouldn't be nice. Hmm. Terry shakes its head. You'd swear that as you made your offer, from somewhere came the sound of high-pitched, derisive laughter. Bonk. <laughs> oh, I'll just stick my hand in. Uh, okay. <laughs> That's a nice touch. The sheer face of the mountain rises steeply up to the sorcerer's tower far above. Most of the rock face looks utterly unclimbable. A smaller rock rests near the larger like a little brother. The large boulder looks old and weathered, like the mountain itself. You wonder idly how much a stone like that must weigh. The sheer mountain face is very formidable, but here is stone that is rough and jumbled as though it were the aftermath of an avalanche. It looks easily climbable. Oh, there's a person there. Great cow! There's someone hiding behind that large rock! And just who could be here inside Hightower? Who indeed? Hey you! Who goes there? Frightened of a mere woman, King Kalish. I am Lady De Summers, Duchess of the De Summers Estate. My father sits on your council. That is some echo <laughs> on both of our voices, though, so I, I feel like it must be intentional. A bit far from home, aren't you, my Lady De Summers? Aye, but when I heard of your quest Ooh. and that they had allowed you to go alone, I had to find you. I offer you a gift for love, my king, and the service of my sword to aid you in your quest. Oh, hell yeah. Except I'm not allowed to say yes, apparently. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. I appreciate your loyalty, but I must do this alone. No, my king. It's noble of you to endanger none but yourself. But I swear that two are always better than one. I fear for you. Please let me help. I literally do need your help. I need to I need to not be alone. I'm not allowed to say yes.
I am unabound to reject your aid, though I'll take your gift. Very well, Lord. This amulet I wear is a charm, passed down through the de Summers family for generations. It is said to have mystical powers, but it is mostly a good luck charm. The powers are useless. Why is that? The mad mage who made this amulet said that its true powers could only be used after the wearer had been pronounced dead. Hmm. Any such power is rather useless to the wearer, don't you think? To my knowledge, it has never been invoked. But wear it for luck anyway. Well, maybe if I jump down the well. <laughs> The amulet is unprepossessing enough, plain gold and a not very valuable gem set in its middle, and it shows no sign of being magical. It's clearly the thought that counts. <laughs> in darkness, its beauty will remind me of your own. Goodbye, babe. Goodbye, my lord. A little bit of flirting. And may the gods watch over you in your quest. Perhaps someday we shall meet again. Farewell. Can have little of flirting as a treat. Mm. 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 Okay. Weird. Uh, sorry, one second. I'll be right back.
There we go. Sorry about that. I am back. Moment. All right. You must leave here at once, Duchess. I'll just rest here a moment, King Kalish, and then I'll be on my way. Hmm. Been pronounced dead, huh? Well, I mean, anyone can pronounce me dead, right? The mountainside here is rough enough to climb, but far too steeply angled to be safe. You'll have to look elsewhere for the way up to Sanway's tower. The ground here is dry and rough, not saturated with water as you might expect. The magic waters of Sanway's tower fall from a great height and land here on the ground far below. What force creates the water in a never-ending flow, and where does the river of water go that should be here? Interesting. There appears to be a cave entrance, partly hidden by the tumbling water. Because of course there is. Hold on a second. First, before I do that... Oh, she's gone. if I try climbing this. Okay, no immediate mishaps. <laughs> Ooh. Giant bird nest, neat. It looks like an eagle's nest, or maybe a condor, although I've never seen one that big, nor one shaped in quite that way. Definite uh, King's Quest flashbacks here. <laughs> judging, from, judging from the nest, it's a large wad of greasy-looking black feathers, unlike any you have ever seen. The mountain here is a jumble of loose rocks and scraggly moss. You must be careful as you climb to avoid starting another rock slide. Looking up, you see a large, safe-looking ledge not too far above you. One good effort and you should be able to reach it. Some greasy black feathers have fallen out of the nest. Oops. They are out of your reach. There we go. The feathers are long and black and slightly shiny. They are as large as ostrich feathers, but more closely resemble those of the crow. Okay, wait. I want to go back into the cave. I can't, uh, I can't skip the climbing sequence. It's so well animated, though. God. The animation in this game is so good. Oh, interesting. <laughs> Give me like a delayed uh, menu open. <laughs> All right, what's in the cave? Is there gonna be a troll in there? Oh, there's uh, there's more. Okay. The path leads on to the west, around the base of the mountain. Up ahead you can see an extremely odd rock formation rising into the sky. Alright, let's just let's go to the cave first, because I said I wanted to. Ooh. Hey, it's Enry the Ermit! 
Yes, I memorized Henry the Hermit's theme from Quest for Glory 1 because I've played that game a million times. <laughs> The hermit uses a large flat rock as his chair. It looks very uncomfortable, but that is the way of hermits. You've got a nice... Oh, it's a... I thought it was a table. <laughs> this must be where the hermit sleeps. It looks mighty uncomfortable, not to mention unsanitary. Here... Oh. Is this... Ominous music. <laughs> this old man looks vaguely familiar. He has that generic little old man look that the mask players do so effectively. His age is hard to place. He might he must be somewhere between 60 and 100. It's a pretty wide range. <laughs> the dark ashes of, of a fire show that at least the hermit cooks his meals. You wonder, in this treeless expanse, what he uses for fuel. He's gonna kill you with a rock. Quite possibly! spoken to one another. I'm sure of it. How did you get here? One day I woke up and took a walk outside and there was a wall around the mountain. I couldn't go anywhere else, so here I stayed. I've been here a long, long time. I bet that's Nur Tom. I bet that's the wizard. You've been here 20 years, old man. 20? What's that? years, huh? Imagine that. Imagine that. What are you doing here? Just living. Meditating. Studying my books. Learning secrets. I sleep more these days than I used to. I watch the birds and the waterfall and the smoke from the tower. Ooh. What sort of secrets do you know? Uh, I know many things. I know that soap is made by mixing ashes with oil or fat. The lye in the ash breaks down the oils in the fat and on your hands and thus cleans them. <laughs> Science! I know that acid is made by burning sulfur and saltpeter surrounded by water vapor. The vitriol from the chemical mix enters the water vapor to make liquid acid. I know that a frog's muscles jump near electricity. If you hang a frog's leg on a hook and leave it out in a storm, it will move when lightning strikes nearby. Oh, uh, that's very interesting. <laughs> he knows science is what he knows. <laughs> Are you a monk? Oh no, no, not me, not a monk. I serve no deity here, I simply hide. From what do you hide? Hey, what's that? Hide? You want to hide just like me from, from the sorcerer, right? We can both hide from the sorcerer and talk the years away. <laughs> what can you tell me about the tower? The tower, eh? Why do you want to know about that? I have a score to settle with the sorcerer. Do you now? Brave lad to face so powerful a mage. I tell you, Sonny, unless you have the Power Stones, you might as well turn back now. Oh, and come see me when you've finished the Evil One. I might have a reward for you. You'd better go now. No sense wasting time with an old man. What can you tell me about the Power Stones? There are prophecies about them and about Sanwi. The stones were created generations ago as a defense against the sorcerer, but his agents stole them and scattered them about the kingdom before they could be used. 
Two are in the possession of the kings of the various realms. Thought so. The location of the third is unknown. Hmm. Where can I find the power stone? The king of the fairies has one, I think. The Caliph of the Softus might have the other one. I forget. I certainly haven't got one. <laughs> Go away now, with you? I'm tired and I need to rest. Aww. Hello again, young fellow. What is it now? I want to know more about the other kingdoms of the realm. All the wisdom of the world in one day. What's to tell that every schoolboy doesn't know? Well, I know magic, and everyone has magic of a different sort. The cave of shifting dreams in Slavin Nipatan is important. The shamans of Saptus Ecliptus are worth talking to. And if you solve the forest maze of the fairies, you can speak with the butterfly cave. That's all. Now skip down over you. Well, that wasn't anything I didn't already know. You again. Get out of here before I turn you into a toad. <laughs> Aw. Wait, will he turn me into a toad? Oops. I keep doing that. You again. Aw. Get out of here before- You again. Darn it. <laughs> Get out of here before I turn you into a toad. Fine. <laughs> I want to be turned into a toad. I'm sure that's the wizard. That's gotta be the uh, the same wizard we met in the beginning of the game. Who has mysteriously disappeared. It looks like some time in the past one of the pillars collapsed, leaving piles of large rocks here at the bottom. What could have caused a solid stone to collapse that way? The ground here is rough and dry and is scattered with many loose stones and small boulders. The mountainside is dark and forbidding here since the sun is blocked on all sides. These strange stone towers rise into the air until their tops are lost to sight. There appear to be 24 of them arranged in five neat rows of five towers each, with one missing. Is this a natural formation? Rock tree. Huh. Hmm. Well, there doesn't seem to be anything to do here. Yeah. <laughs> he is he is king of the mosey. <laughs> Sire of saunters. <laughs> the monarch, the monarch of mosey. <laughs> I wonder if there's a way to, uh, is there a way to increase walk speed? Not really. <laughs> the, the Sovereign of Stroll. <laughs> Climbs very slowly too, but that's probably for the best, really. Yes. <laughs> I mean, he's the king. He arrives whenever the hell he wants to. <laughs> if anyone else complains, then then that's their problem. Ooh. I'm gonna get. Uh oh.
I mean, it, God, and it, like this is clearly rotoscoped animation too. Like this was this is these are real people doing this. So I feel like it's probably like it might be a good thing that it's slow, just so that you could really revel in the in the detail of the animation. <laughs> Oh boy. But yes, not very fast paced. <laughs> We're just gonna enjoy this climbing for quite some time. Ah! Stop doing that. <laughs> Nicely done. Good job. Yeah, that was a lot of climbing. <laughs> If this had been a King's Quest game, I would have had to, like, click my way through every single one of those. It's her again. Hey, Lady Suffolk, what are you doing here? I told you to return to your duchy. And how did you get up here so fast? Shapeshifter! I know a shorter path than the one uh -oh. you took my king. I felt sure that you needed my help whether you knew it or not. Great town! Look out behind you! Oh, save game. The creature is some sort of beast out of a child's nightmare, partly human with two legs and two arms and intelligent eyes, yet wholly inhuman. On its face is an expression of hatred such as you hope to never see again. In the brief moment you have to glance your way, you see that Lainey is starting to move into action, but you are the first line of defense. I'm just gonna... I'm sure nothing will happen. <laughs> the ledge is narrow, but certainly wide enough to travel upon without any danger. It runs in a narrow bound around ha band around half the circumference of the mountain. Uh... You bark out some commanding words, but the beast is unafraid. Absolute evil glows behind its inhuman eyes, and it pays no attention to your words. I'm just gonna, like, walk up to it. Oh, okay. You have mere seconds in which to act. The beast will catch you if you try to flee. Oh, okay. Well, I can just stand here forever, looks like. <laughs> oh, no, I can't. Alright, I do have limited time. Ah! <laughs> oh, jeez! <laughs> And then it just flung me down the mountain. Oh, okay, cool. All right. So I can actually let me let me just reload. Actually, I should. So I should stop. But yeah, I can do this. I'm gonna I'm gonna shield stone it. It seems like the right time to use this. Uh, throw. Shield stone. Oh, dang. Watch out! The beast is too close to you! You'd be trapped inside the dome with it! Alright, fine. Then, sword. Glat! Oh! Great cow! Lady's noble act has saved your life, but certainly cost her her own. Both she and the beast must surely have perished at the fall. Oh, crap! Well, I didn't want that to happen either. Hmm. I wonder if that was the right thing to do. I wonder if I'm if I if I've screwed myself over by doing that. Well, I guess we'll have to find out next time. That's true. She can be pronounced dead now. Does that does that Hmm, yeah. Can I what yeah, what happens what happens if I invoke it? You concentrate with all of your might, trying to trying to find the hidden power of the amulet. Not being dead, you fail. Okay. Yeah, so it's gotta be the wearer. Like, not her. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Mysterious. Alright, well I'm gonna the I'm gonna stop here. Oh, I, I, God, I want to keep playing. This game is great. I like. I'm, I'm loving this so far. Um, but yeah, we'll pick this up again next week. Uh, very much looking forward to more. This was great. Uh, 
We'll be doing more Coaster of Delicious 2 tomorrow, and then Wednesday. I'm, I'm back on my Wednesday stream bullshit. Uh, <laughs> so we'll be picking up a Reseteer again on Wednesday. Oh man, it feels so good to be back in point-and-click adventure game uh, land and playing a game that I'm actually looking forward to playing more of as opposed to dreading like a little big adventure. <laughs> All respect that game, but uh, yeah, no, not for me. So let's see, let's find someone to raid. Um, what is that? That looks familiar. What is that? I reckon he was playing something that... What is he playing? I have no idea what that is. Actually, hold on. Uh, does, it, does it say in the thing? No, it does not. Oh, Wild Arms. Okay, yeah, Wild Arms too, yeah. Sure, we'll send you over to Nerethia for some Wild Arms. Um, I still need to play those games too. Uh, I gotta I gotta get my, my arm wilding on. No respect. <laughs> um... I do have, I think the first two, two or three. I know I have. I know I have some of them on PSN. Um, yes, I gotta do that. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Oh God, an endless parade of games to play and never enough time to play them. Um, but yes, anyway, this game was great, and I'm looking forward to it, to playing some more. And I will see you tomorrow. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming by. Have a good one.